All right, second board. This is my Tronic X12 30S build in all its glory with the Superflux Mark III, which is basically the brand new version of the HS motor. And yeah, it's my first real high voltage build. I did build a 24S version twice, actually once with the Tronic 250R and once with the Tronic X12 24. But this one here is basically in a league of its own. With 30S, you have 126 volts. Imagine if you took the GTS and you took the cells that it has, it has 27 of those, and you added three more. So instead of 113 volts, you end up with 126 volts. And um, yeah, so you basically get that extra range and extra voltage. Uh, the range simply is you got you add three cells to the 27 cells, so it's a bit more than a 10% increase to what you already had. And um, yeah, I'm doing this by the way. If you're wondering about the starting temperatures, I'm repeating this ride because I forgot to screen record, meaning I didn't have the proper audio. So I'm repeating it one more time, but uh, spoiler alert, the Tronic is just doing so well that doing a second repeat would be no problem. If I did that with the GTS, that would uh, be a major, um, it wouldn't be fair to it and anyway, but this one here is doing so well that I don't mind just repeating it again. I will also post the results from the first run, which is really the main numbers we should be focusing on but um yeah I, I don't mind doing it one more time it's not that long of a run and uh i noticed that i should have my atr a bit stiffer on this board i'm occasionally touching the tail but i'm okay Actually, the having this 30S Tronic is what motivated me to start doing these temperature tests because 30S or high voltage MOSFETs are notorious for getting hotter than than uh, lower voltage ones. So typically, the 20, 20S and maybe even 24S controllers they sort of have the sweet spot for how cool they can run this is why the Thor is running so well and that's pretty much the controller that stays the coolest the x12 24 also stays almost equally cool it's actually hard to say which one stays cooler um, but it handles the 100 and 100.8 volts really really well but it's a big jump to the next class of MOSFETs, the ones that can handle 100 and up to 150 volts, I think. So, yeah, I was a bit worried whether those high voltage MOSFETs would be a good choice for my trails here and if they would just lead to too much controller overheating like we used to have with the old um, with the little Fockers, the V3s, as well as the uh, Tronic 250Rs. They just do get pretty hot. And um, yeah, but I've been really impressed with the X1230 because it managed to stay just, I wouldn't say as cool as the Thor and the X1224, but easily within the green zone at any time and basically still shifting the bottleneck, the thermal bottleneck back to the motor. And that's really what matters, right? It, being 20 or 30 degrees away from the motor temperature at all times doesn't really buy you much. So um, you always kind of have to focus on whatever your next bottleneck is. 
And yeah, so the X1230 still manages to stay cooler than the motor pretty much all of the time. Where are we now? Okay, didn't look at the numbers, so I'm showing Fahrenheit here. Let's go back to Celsius. And um, yeah, so on this run, because motors don't cool down as quickly as controllers, the motors started at a significantly higher temperature than the first time. But as I said, I screwed up the audio, so I had to do it again. I think doing the same thing again with some of the boards that barely make it in terms of thermals is not possible because you would basically then be guaranteed to overheat. So anyway, so this is the Tronic X12 with the Superflux Mark III and yeah, that's what we got. So I'll end the video right here and then make the next one featuring the two GTSs that I have. So see you guys soon and thanks for watching.